In this Lies of P video, I'm gonna be showing you the Stormsteel Templar build, which is a build that can almost be fully completed by Area 4, and one that wields a ginormous special greatsword and pairs it with Electric Blitz to deliver colossal damage in only a few swings. The Stormsteel Templar is a heavy hitting build that utilizes the heavy stagger damage of the Colossal Holy Sword of the Ark by applying Electric Shock on enemies. Applying Electric Shock will not do any damage over time, but instead increases the amount of physical damage and Electric Blitz damage they take. It also makes enemies experience increased stagger damage, which makes it a fantastic pair with the Holy Sword of the Ark. The Holy Sword of the Ark has the Fable Arts Patient Smash and Alter. Patient Smash will charge up a great overhead attack that deals good damage. Alter is more interesting as it extends the range of the Holy Sword of the Ark and decreases its stamina cost. This form is not temporary and only returns to its original shape if Alter is used again. Once used again, the sword will glow red, indicating that the next attack will be in power. In order to apply electric shock in this build, we need to have a source of electric blitz, of which we have a few. Our main source will be from the Legion Arm Fulminus, a Legion Arm which charges up a big electric shock that does decent damage and applies a ton of electric blitz. Our next source will be from the Electric Blitz Grindstone, which simply imbues electric blitz onto the Holy Sword of the Ark. The last possible source of electric blitz is a consumable, the Throwing Cell. Using this consumable will throw the item, do a bit of damage, and apply electric blitz. This will usually apply electric shock within two uses. The basic rotation of this build playstyle is to enter the battle with altar activated, apply electric shock with any of the previous sources, slash away with the extra damage buff until the enemy is staggered, then after using a fatal attack, alter back to normal in order to execute a charged heavy attack that will be empowered from altar and deal extra physical damage from electric shock. Then repeat from the start whenever electric shock is not on the enemy. The best class to start for this build will be the Path of the Sweeper's Strength, as the Holy Sword of the Ark is a great sword with B Motivity Scaling and C Technique Scaling. Using a Motivity Crank can increase this to A in Motivity and C in Technique, giving a slight damage boost. If you chose Path of the Bastard Dexterity, then it may be better to stick to the Technique Scaling by using a Technique Crank to make the weapon have a B Scaling, though you won't get as much damage as if you were using Motivity and have an A Scaling on the weapon. Keep in mind that even though you can respec, you cannot respec your starting class stats, so if you want to min-max this build, you must choose the recommended build path. For Area 1 and 2, the beginner weapon will be fine as you don't have many options early on. For Area 3 and its boss, as well as a chunk of Area 4, the easiest weapons to pick up are the Booster Glaive Blade and the Electric Coil Stick Handle, which does not scale greatly with motivity, but it shouldn't matter in the early game and it gives a good moveset. The Booster Glaive can be found in Area 3, Workshop Union Entrance Stargazer by taking an immediate left and going down the ladder towards the Puppet of the Future, and then going to the opposite end where there will be a chest with a Booster Glaive Blade and Booster Glaive Handle. The Electric Coil Stick can be found in Area 2 inside the house on Elysian Boulevard Stargazer where there is a merchant located in the same house as the Stargazer. This merchant will sell you the Electric Coil Stick for 1200 Urga. The Holy Ark of the Sword is a special weapon, which means it can only be obtained by purchasing it from Alidoro, trading for a special boss Ergo. Luckily, the boss you need to defeat for this weapon is in Area 3. This means as soon as you meet Alidoro in Area 4, you can purchase the Holy Sword of the Ark. For this build, we'll only be using Motivity as the main weapon damage stat. Leveling Advance secondarily could work, as we do rely on Electric Shock a lot, which scales with Advance, but the Fulminus has the same scaling on Motivity and Advance, so it will be more efficient to just level Motivity. For the rest of the stats, you want high vitality to survive tanking a lot of hits and high vigor to be able to use multiple charged attacks. High capacity is also necessary in order to equip this very heavy weapon with any special amulets and heavy duty puppet parts, and we will not be leveling technique or advance. As for the order in which you level, invest in vitality for the first 10 levels as that extra HP makes the game much more forgiving of your mistakes early on. Then the next 20 or so levels should be focused on motivity for weapon damage and vigor. After this point in the game, you'll get puppet parts that start to weigh you down as well as your Holy Sword of the Ark, so start pumping capacity to increase the amount of weight you can hold. It is necessary to keep under 80% load in your weight stat as the normal roll becomes much slower when you pass the 80% threshold. From this point, you should level all the default abilities equally following the endgame stat distribution on the screen. When it comes to amulets, there are one or two special amulets recommended for this build which can be acquired from trading the boss soul of Area 1 boss and Area 2 boss, so make sure you don't use their ergo beforehand. In the first amulet slot, I recommend switching between the three extra damaged enemy type amulets. These would be the Carcass Butcher's Amulet, the Murderer Puppet's Amulet, and the Puppet Destroyer's Amulet. Switch the amulet based on the type of boss or enemy you're predominantly fighting in your area for a very noticeable extra damage buff. 
In the second amulet slot, the Patience amulet is good for getting back your stamina after using it all up on charged attacks. An alternative special amulet that can also work is the Dancing One's amulet, which will let you roll without having any stamina. This means you can fully commit to charged attacks, spending your whole stamina bar, and still got out of danger safely. The only downside is the weight of this amulet, which is almost as high as the main weapon of the build. In the third amulet slot, the Carrier's amulet will increase the weight threshold so that you can equip heavy parts and amulets without having to spend levels into capacity that could be spent on motivity. Alternatively, if you don't use heavy puppet parts, you can use the Strength amulet to get a slight edge in damage. In the last amulet slot, the Extreme Modification amulet is a good fit for this build. As the main Fable art used in this build is Altar, which only takes one Fable slot, you will often have three Fable slots to spare. This amulet will increase basic weapon damage depending on how many Fable slots are charged, providing an easy damage boost to this build. The best P-Organ synergy effects for this build are the following. Increased Pulse Cells, which increases survivability and sustain against bosses and areas. Link Dodge, which allows you to dodge further away from wide AoE attacks. Add Amulet Slots, allows you to equip more powerful amulets which can increase damage, improve survivability, and provide special effects. Enhance Pulse Cell Recovery, increases survivability and sustain against bosses and areas. Increase Staggerable Window 1, increases the stagger time to pull off the full combo against bosses who have a very short stagger time. Add Fable Slots, allows you to use Alter and your Fable Arts more often. Increase Special Grindstone Uses, this allows you to use Electric Blitz more often on your Grindstone. And Perfect Guard Cause Stiffness, makes it so that you break the stance of mini-bosses to buy time in order to do a heavy attack. For individual effects you get from spending one quartz, you'll want Under Attack type, any of the synergy effects, Enhanced Charge Stagger Attack, Enhanced Fatal Attack, Enhanced Ambush Stagger Attack. For Survival type, you'll want any of the synergy effects, Enhanced Guard Regain Recovery, Lowers Damage of Charged Attack slash Fable Arts, Perfect Guard Guard Regain Recovery. For ability type, you want lower charge attack stamina consumption, reduce stamina consumption from dash, fatal attack fable charger, special grindstone weapon durability recovery, auto charge legion, and perfect guard fable charge enhance. For item type, you want legion magazine effect enhance, special grindstone increase effect duration, and charge fable upon pulse cell use. When it comes to legion arm, the only legion arm which can generate electric blitz which leads to electric shock is the fulminus which is unlocked in area 2. Once the Fulminus is fully upgraded, it will deal devastating damage and stagger after its three charge-ups, and will apply a good amount of Electric Blitz to apply Electric Shock. To use this Legion Arm without getting hit, you need to find downtime between enemy attacks where they stay still and allow you to charge the Fulminus. This is ideally the first thing you do in a boss fight, as Electric Shock lasts a long time, and you will get the best value if applied as early as possible. If you ever run out of charge, feel free to use Legion Magazines to recharge it, and these are very easily acquired from Polendia for very cheap. The Electric Blitz Grindstone is fantastic for generating Electric Shock onto enemies and will also give the Holy Sword of the Ark a damage boost against any enemy who is afflicted with Electric Shock. If you want, you can try using the Deconstruction Grindstone as an alternative later in the game to get more stagger damage, but with the Electric Blitz Grindstone you get extra damage on top of the stagger damage, so it may not be as good. For Puppet Parts, with this build I always used the highest weight Puppet Part I found, which made me extremely tanky by the end of the game. I kept my equipment weight down by using the carrier's amulet when needed and leveling capacity, allowing me to equip these heavy parts without passing the weight threshold. Final tips. When using this build outside of boss fights, don't always use altar. The form has its downsides as well as its upsides. In small corridors, the weapon is basically unusable as the length and the moveset of the weapon will cause the sword to constantly bounce off the walls. Altar is great otherwise with its large AoE slash attacks and reduced stamina cost, but this one disadvantage can easily get you killed, so be sure to remember this. Second, don't forget to use the throwing cell against bosses for an easy electric blitz buildup. These are especially helpful when you have to play safe but need to apply electric shock, as this is the only way to apply this effect from range. Be careful on how many you use, however, as these items are not easily acquired like Legion magazines or fabled catalysts. Lastly, there is a difficult to pull off massive damage boost to this build using the fable aren't patient smash. As aforementioned, after we fatal attack the enemy, we can unalter our weapon to make our next attack deal extra damage. Usually, you don't have enough Fable slots to use Patient Smash, but in the end game, when you have 5 Fable slots and get extra Fable charges from any sources, you can start using Patient Smash instead of a normal heavy attack for absolutely colossal damage against bosses. So that wraps up our Stormsteel Templar build. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a big punishing weapon build for all of you fans out there of large weapons paired with the Electric Shock status effect, which is very, very good in this game. As always, if you have other tips for other players, leave them in the comments. If you have questions, let me know and I'll try and answer them as well. We also have more builds coming for Liza P, so stay tuned for those. 